Boa noite, começando mais um Fumix aqui na UTV, programa dedicado à música eletrônica e à produção musical. Sou seu apresentador de DJ Residente, o DJ Nuta. Bom, e hoje, galera, eu vou estar tá fazendo aí um programa especial, no qual eu vou estar tá lançando essa música, que é a Galaxy of Dreams. É... E eu vou estar tá também sorteando uns CDs aí para quem quiser. Manda e-mail aí, djnuta.mec.com E aí vai estar tá recebendo esse CD que acabou de sair, tá aí na Beatport, iTunes, em todos os sites lojas principais pela internet e para começar o programa também a gente vai passar um documentário exclusivo aí que é já antigo né sobre um pouco da história da cena eletrônica aí o Pump Up The Volume só que são como são várias partes não dá para passar todas a gente vai estar tá passando a parte número 11 que é uma parte que fala aí do tem entrevista com o Derek May contando algumas músicas que ele fez algumas hits aí da história da cena eletrônica então já vamos começar aí com, com esse documentário In nearby Detroit, House was about to give birth to its angry sibling, Techno. We were focused in, man. We were like Shaolin monks or something when it came to music. You know, we were focused, we were locked in from the very before the beginning, I guess you could say. Techno brought an intellectual theory to dance music. Michael James comes to my house. He wants to, he's a friend of mine from around the corner. He just wants to, wow, you got keyboards. I just want to sit down and make some music. Can I do that? Is it okay? Yeah, fine, go ahead. He starts to mess around with the piano. He plays piano wonderfully. And he's playing this ballad thing. He did it for, I don't know, hours, and I sequenced it for him, and he split. I, I just listened to it, and I heard one particular part out of it that sounded really interesting. So I, I just did an edit. Uh, and I just looped this one particular part of the sequence. And uh, from there, I, I just went on to do strings. I was scared of strings. I was scared of that track when I did it. I was completely naked in my house for a whole day, just walking around my house naked, looking out the window, you know, at, the, at like this cityscape and just listening to this track. I don't know, I was tripping. But I, I never did drugs, but I felt like I was on drugs, man. There was a guy in Chicago, in Chicago one time that said to me, he said, uh, listen, he was in a record shop, he said, I don't know if I should dance to that or if I should waltz, you know, and that was the reason it was there for me, because uh, I was trying to put, I was trying to show the sort of sophistication of dance music. Strings of Life, classic. Made by someone who had a vision of, of the future in the sense of, of what the machines could do if you allowed them to rock in this way. Euphoric, yet futuristic, you know, yet Detroit techno. It, it truly was a masterpiece. And you couldn't really categorise it either. It, it wasn't house, it wasn't techno, it was just Derek May. I said, oh, well, if you can imagine craft work, and George Clinton stuck in the elevator with one keyboard between them, you know, and you got George on the left and you got Kraftwerk on the right. That was the concept, you know, as if they're stuck in this elevator for hours and when it finally opens, you know, out comes this sort of, you know, funky metal smell, you know, and the keyboard is sort of flipped inside out and, you know, that was it. In the summer of 88, Big Fun thrust techno into the UK charts. Paul Okafor was planted at uh, it was a Monday night at Heaven. It was during the acid period, when this, this summer of acid, I don't know what they call it, but it, it was, uh, you know, a good vibe. And then he played Big Fun, and it just was amazing. Detroit's techno joined Chicago House in Britain as the soundtrack of what was to become the Summer of Love. It 
was really about that time. And people would just sing it from the rafters. They would just be singing it from the top of their voices, but they have that driving techno sound to it. Everyone was just living this lifestyle. It was so quick and changing every week. It's just people gave up their jobs, they gave up their wives, their lives, they gave up everything. You couldn't go to work on a Tuesday morning, you know. You're better off outside the South African Embassy singing Free Nelson Mandela. I used to DJ at Spectrum um, till four in the morning, and I was still at the gas board, you know, putting meters in the back of my car to go and fit them. No one could stop it. You know, it was to do with us and what we were creating. Only, I think, when Paul Oakenfold asked me to do Future that I thought, well, I can't possibly stay up two nights a week and fit gas meters safely <laughs> without killing someone, you know, blowing some poor old deer up. It was like an explosion of ideas, you know, people were writing poetry, you know, bricklayers coming in showing you bits of poetry. Voodoo Ray was the, the soundtrack for 88 for Monkey Indians. I was just picturing like some having like this big opening, like a and then like BAM! It wasn't a song as such, it was just a groove. Do do that's like that's the killer part really. That old that classic early house thing of a bloke just chanting something which was voodoo ray, voodoo ray. And you'd had a pill and then there was this, you know, <laughs> going over it and then boing, 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 and you know what I mean? And that was it. Gerald Simpson's masterpiece was designed with one club in mind, the Hacienda. Uh, yeah, Gerald, Gerald was hanging out, hanging around the club, you know. Um, we tried to get rid of him, but he just he kept coming back. Gerald used to come, Gerald Simpson used to come on Friday nights from off early 80s, you know, like 84. And he arrived at DJ Box, you know, at some point or other with a copy of Voodoo Ray. I'm sure I just heard my tune, like a bit of it. And then, like, it came in. Oh, fucking hell, he's playing it. Oh, yeah, I can't believe it. And then, like, everyone started cheering. I was like, Oh shit, well, what's going on here? You know, so I ran upstairs to the DJ and I was like, oh, cheers for playing it. I looked down and everyone was like, I'm going off. I was like, wow, cool. <laughs> you know, the sound wasn't always fantastic in the house because it was a concrete building. But uh, yeah, Voodoo Ray always sounded absolutely brilliant. As Voodoo Ray dominated clubs throughout the UK, the Hacienda opened a new night. Hots, I think the first night was July the 13th, 88. And someone said, fuck me, man, go and check out the, your Wednesday nights. It's stunning. It was the sort of a Ibiza thing. We had the swimming pool. A ludicrous idea. <laughs> Can you imagine with all the, the, the glasses and, you know, people diving in and out? There was blood everywhere. Some of the doormen were the lifeguards and uh, they had tables with the sun canopies on, you know, like you were outside in the sun. Um, they were giving out ice pops when you walked in. I walked through the door, 10.30, the next Wednesday night, and I look around in shock. Like a, like a you know, thundering train hit the Hacienda. I remember one night standing in there and thinking, I, I really wouldn't rather be anywhere else in the whole world but standing right here, right now, in this, in this place. Too strong. We had 2,500 people in there a night doing this and are going for it. I came out of the DJ box, you know, several weeks into July. I uh, was just almost scared. It was exhilarating. It was just, just, to, just to feel the energy in the place. There was a corner called E Corner, but to be, to be frank with you, once ecstasy set in at the Hacienda, the whole place was, you know, big. You took the E. And because nobody at that time knew what it did to you, you didn't think you was doing anything wrong. You didn't think fucking 
six people in the corner all getting, you know, the dick sucked and sucking birds' tits with anything, you know, anything. It just seemed... Normal. É isso aí, galera. A gente tá de volta aqui no Comix. Bom, como eu falei, hoje tô fazendo um programa especial aí. Vai ter, tá tendo o um lançamento aí da minha nova música, é a Galaxy of Dreams, ECP. Pra quem quiser, então, também vai estar tá aí. Manda e-mail, quiser receber. É djnuta.mec.com E agora, depois desse documentário, vamos de música, né? Vamos começar já tocando com, com a Galaxy of Dreams. <música> I'm <laughs> 
aí, galera, bom, toquei aí pra vocês esse set especial, teve é, várias músicas minhas aí, novidades, é, essa última foi o Shot, Shot Up, que é do remix do Space Coach, é, Gino Latino, que também é outro lançamento, e também tem o um lançamento da Galaxy of Dreams, que tocou aí, quem quiser encontrar mais sobre, sobre as músicas, quiser ir lá no Beatport, digita lá Nuta Coquier, ou se quiser entrar no Facebook também, vai encontrar as informações, iTunes, Amazon, onde quiser tá, tá a música lá, e quem quiser também receber esse CD, manda e-mail de jnuta.mec.com e a gente vai estar tá dando alguns CDs desse aqui, do Galaxy of Dreams. A Galaxy of Dreams vem é, a versão pista, né, e a versão que é chill out, mais ambiente, uma música mais para relaxar, e quem gosta também, a piano version, que é essa versão mais tranquila. E a terceira música é a Phantom, que é inclusive a música que eu vou encerrar aqui, a última aí do, do, do programa. Então é isso, galera. A gente fica aí com o Fumix. Semana que vem tem mais Fumix aqui na UTV com o melhor da música eletrônica. Até semana que vem. Tchau. Thank <laughs> you.